This is the XMG Pro 50, a rather impressive 15 inch gaming laptop that you can spec however you want. It comes with an i9-3900HX as your only CPU option, but you can pick from an RTX 4060 laptop GPU or a 4070 instead. You can also spec your RAM, I picked 32 gigs of SK Hynix DDR5 5600, and you can have up to two M.2 SSDs in here. I got a one terabyte Crucial P5. You can even pick the keyboard layouts, but as you might have already noticed, I reviewed a pretty similar machine last week. That was an XMG Focus 16, so a little difference, but it featured the same CPU, RAM and SSD, but with an RTX 4060 laptop GPU. I spec'd a 4070 in this Pro 15, so I thought on top of a normal laptop review, I would show you just how different or similar those two chips are. Let's dive straight in with the gaming results. Starting with Rainbow Six Siege, at 1080p there isn't all that much of a difference. The 4070 nets 20 FPS more, which, I mean, sounds great, until you realise that that's only 5% more performance. Still, it's safe to say that you're getting a good experience from either of these chips. At 1440p and 1600p respectively, the difference is a little bigger, although do bear in mind that these aren't quite like for like resolutions. One is 16x10 and one is 16x9, meaning there are 10% fewer pixels on the Pro 15's display. That might help explain the 14% better performance on the 4070, but still either way you can have a good time here. CSGO is another ultra fast esports title which runs incredibly well on both machines with another 5% performance improvements at 1080p from the 4070 and almost the exact same percentage difference at native resolution at around 14%. Again, both of these chips and resolutions offer an excellent gaming experience, so I wouldn't be too worried about spending the extra if these sorts of titles are what you're looking to play. Cyberpunk is a rather interesting one though, as at 1080p there is only a 4 FPS gap. That translates to just 3% faster going from a 4060 to a 4070 laptop chip. That is a little lower than we've seen so far, but compare that to the native resolution performance where there's now a 24% gap. That is 10% higher than the other games that we've seen so far, and that can all be down to the difference in resolution. Both have 8GB of VRAM though, which is likely a limiting factor for both of these chips. Again, regardless, getting nearly 100 FPS average at 1600p isn't exactly bad, and that's with DLSS disabled too on medium settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider sees a larger gap at 1080p, up to 10%, going from around 160 FPS to around 175. You'd be hard pressed to notice that difference, but it's there nonetheless. At native resolution, again, we see a larger gap, this time around 22%, with almost the exact same results as Cyberpunk going from 95 FPS on the 4060 at 1600p to 116 FPS at 1440p on the 4070. The results from Fortnite were rather strange, so while I will flash them up here, I'm not going to dive too deep into them, as especially the performance results from the Focus 16 are a little, little off uh, and so there's definitely some more troubleshooting to be had there. As for Microsoft Flight, that continues the trend of DirectX 12 games having around 10% or so, or 8.7% specifically, more performance at 1080p and actually over 30% more performance at 1440p. Neither reach anywhere near their respective refresh rates, but you do get a healthy amount more performance from the 4070, especially at native resolution. Going from 72 FPS average to 95 FPS average is a considerable and noticeable improvement for sure. Lastly, in Hitman 3, on generally medium settings, you can expect over 200 FPS from the 4070 versus around 180 FPS on the 4060. That is about 15% faster 
which is pretty impressive considering they both have the same total graphics power at up to 140 watts. I mean, either is plenty, but an extra 25 FPS isn't a bad thing. At native resolution, you're looking at 26% more performance, going from 116 FPS up to 140. Again, that is a healthy increase and isn't just the resolution difference either. The biggest change by far though is the price tag. The 4070 laptop ship is 295 euros more than the 4060. That is 13% more money for uh, native resolution, so about 15% more performance when adjusting for that resolution difference. I can't say that I would want to spend that personally, especially thanks to both of these chips only offering 8GB of VRAM. If the 4070 offered 10 or 12 gig for the same price, well, I would say that actually might be worth it. But as it stands, I'm not so sure. When it comes to the rest of the XMG Pro 15 though, it's one hell of a machine. Personally, I prefer the 16x9 aspect ratio, especially for content consumption. It's a little shorter of a machine as well, which makes it slightly easier to fit in the backpack. And the 240Hz IPS 1440p panel is fantastic. It isn't quite as bright with a peak of 350 nits, although that still does beat XMG's 300 nit claim, and the contrast ratio isn't quite as good as well, 1030 to 1, but that's still a pretty decent experience. The color gamut coverage is actually a fair bit better, pretty much covering 100% of the DCI-P3 spectrum, and the accuracy well, that isn't quite as good with a Delta E of 1.63, although that's still pretty great, especially for a gaming machine. Response times are a touch disappointing, with only 20% of the transitions falling inside the 4.2 millisecond refresh rate window. The light to dark transitions especially are just insanely slow, taking up to four frames to finish transitioning. Although the dark to light transitions are considerably better. It looks like XMG remembered to overdrive the panel on this model though, as you can see a tiny bit of overshoots in those middle transitions. That's a good thing though, and means that those middle transitions are considerably faster. The upper edge averages out to something like 2.4 milliseconds, which is half the refresh rate window, which is fantastic. A little more tuning down at that bottom end would be great though. Although, generally speaking, looking at the UFO test, it's not a bad experience. Especially with that fast refresh rate, it's kind of hard to see that ghosting in real life, although there is a couple of frames, generally speaking. When it comes to input lag, I'm incredibly impressed. My OSRTT Pro Tool reckons that the on-display latency is just two milliseconds. If you ignore the couple of outlier results, you can expect well under one frame of latency which is incredible, especially for a laptop. Normally, they're on the slower side, but selecting the dedicated GPU only in the NVIDIA control panel is a must on this. The dedicated MUX switch is definitely doing rather well here. All of that means a pretty solid gaming experience. The 240Hz panel is still fast enough to enjoy even fast-paced FPS games. Well, I'm not sure that it's exactly pro-level, it's definitely one of the better gaming laptop experiences you can find. It's smooth, pretty responsive, and especially for more esports titles like Siege, it is a pretty great experience. I didn't have any problem clicking on heads, beyond my own inaccuracy of course, with the only drawback being the fan noise. Here's a quick clip of that. So I'm speaking at a somewhat normal conversational tone and level for you know this space, and as you can probably hear, it's rather loud. Also, the camera is like three feet away from the laptop, so this is pretty noisy. The cooling system does a pretty decent job of cooling the very just insanely power hungry chips uh, and a look inside can kind of you kind of understand why it has four heat sinks two fans and plenty of heat pipes it isn't quite as much a work of art as the bare copper focus 16 
but it is nice enough. While we're in here, it's worth noting that because of the fully configurable design, you get two SODEM DDR5 slots to upgrade if you fancy, two M.2 SSD slots, along with an 80 watt hour battery that lasts about as long as you would expect, aka a couple of hours for web browsing type use or about under an hour for gaming. IO-wise, on the left you get a mic or SPDAF jack, that's a rarity on a laptop for sure, along with a separate headphone jack and two USB-A ports. On the back, you get the funky sort of rectangular three pin DC in jack, 2.5 gig ethernet, HDMI 2.1 and mini display ports, and on the right hand side you get a Thunderbolt 4 port, a regular USB-C port with DisplayPort alt mode, and a micro SD card reader. That's not bad, although only having two USB-A ports is a little bit annoying, especially on this sort of pro high-end machine. Now, as spec, this XMG Pro 15 is a hair over two and a half thousand euros. Dropping that down to the 4060 laptop GPU does clear 300 euros from that, but that does still make it one of the most expensive machines with either a 4060 or 4070 in it. The 13900HX is probably driving a lot of that, so it would be nice to see a few lower end CPU options like the 13700H instead, but if you do want the top of the line CPU and you like the ability to customize and you know, fix your machine, well, it might be worth giving these ones a look. The build quality is, well, pretty decent. The keyboard is a little soft for me, although otherwise I've nice enough experience and plenty fine for gaming. Uh, for content creation, it might the, the lower contrast ratio on the panel might be a bit of a problem, although the gamut coverage and accuracy is great, so a bit of a trade-off there. On the whole, I do quite like it, even if it is a little pricey. With that said though, those are my thoughts both on the 4060, 4070 laptop GPU sort of comparison and on this XMG Pro 50. I'd love to hear your thoughts on both of those things in the comments down below. If you fancy checking out XMG's website, I'll leave a link to them in the description. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon and check out plenty of other videos in the end cards, including the Focus 16 review that will be out there as well. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making videos like these, you can pick up an open source response time tool from osrtt.com, uh, check out YouTube or Patreon or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, and there's a load of other different affiliate links and stuff in the description that don't cost you anything extra to use, but do help me out when you use them. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next video.